from Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Friday Night Football. A bittersweet evening for us here at KTVB, the final Friday night football of the season. Yes, we will still cover the state tournament, but that will happen on our regular newscast during the news at 10 on Friday evenings. Welcome into Friday night football, though. Jay Tust alongside Brady Frederick. The cold weather is here, and so is the postseason. That's right. There's nothing better than playoff football. We have some exciting matchups tonight that really live up to the hype. You get to see the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat uh, as some seasons come to a close. You saw it all. In our game of the week, you voted on it at home. Owyhee and Boise was our KTVB game of the week. Following an epic regular season battle, the Brave and Storm would one up that previous contest tonight over Donald Larson Park. We pick it up in the fourth quarter. Cade Walker caps off an impressive Owyhee drive with an eight yard touchdown run. That made it 21 7. The Storm go on top with nine minutes to go. Boise had an answer though, following a TD and a defensive start. Stop. They would get back to work on offense. Trevor Schoolfield gets it to Cooper Smith out on the perimeter for the big game. Then moments later, Schoolfield slings the tunnel screen to Will Gebert. He takes it all the way down to the five yard line with just over two minutes to go in the contest. Two plays later, the Brave line up Smith at QB and he powers his way over the goal line. That looked like about 21 years of playoff frustration right there. In a matter of minutes, Boise rallies back to tie it at 21 with 57 seconds to go. Owyhee has a quick three and out. They punt. They barely get it off. The decision to kick it to Smith wasn't much better. He goes out of bounds at the 34 with one second left. So the Brave would try a 51 yard field goal to walk it off. It goes a little wide left and falls a little short. So we go to overtime on third and nine. Here comes Matt Irwin to aid and joy. The 28-21 lead for Owyhee as the Storm go back in front. What a grab and physical run by Aiden. Owyhee would now try to counter. Schoolfield boots out. He goes all the way down to the one before a big hit keeps him just short of the end zone. Remember that, Gage Haas and the Storm defense just wasn't having it. So on fourth and goal at the two now, Boise has trouble with the snap. A why he recovers and secures a playoff victory. They win the night 28 21 in overtime. An incredible high school football game. The Storm with probably the biggest victory in the history of their program tonight. Man, that is a huge win for the Storm. Congratulations to Jason Burden, what he's yes. done with that program in his first year. I mean, they continue to climb the ranks year by year, but what a special run. The Boise Brave have put I, together this got, season as well. Owyhee, incredible win, great resiliency. You get that done in overtime, but we do got to take a second to talk about the Boise Brave. Their season comes to an end. What an incredible year. If you know high school football in the Treasure Valley, you know how impeccable that season was for the Boise Brave. We haven't seen anything even close to what they uh, accomplished this year in 21 years. None of these kids were even around uh, the last time the Boise Brave went to the playoffs. So uh, really cool to see that. Cooper Smith, man, you are a dude. You are a warrior. You put that team on your back many times, uh, not just tonight, but this season. Uh, sad to see it come up short, but uh, cool to see why he gets it done and, and man they, they got Hawaii's got some players too that they're still kind of a young program man I'm excited to see what they do this year and in the years to come and shout out to Gage Haas too running that defense for the for the storm absolutely they, they really do fight they, they're a sneaky team yeah. the way they, they can handle an offense and a defense I don't know how you can be sneaky at eight and two Brady but I kind of I, 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 I do kind of agree with you I know you know when we talk about who's going to win state it's always Eagle or Meridian or one of those teams, but uh, Owyhee is, is right there. Yeah, they got they got dudes yes. on the storm. Hey, let's get to some more highlights now. We head on over to Eastern Idaho. Speaking of dudes, uh, Rigby often loaded with them. That's right, Middleton Vikings heading into town. Did you know apparently Rigby, they're usually the Trojans. Yeah. Apparently they go by the Red Devils in the playoffs. They've been covering the state playoffs for a while, Brady. That's a fun fact. Kudos to you. Yeah, it's, it's what, just what I hear. Anyways, that's Peyton Klinger getting the first TD of the game. But I'll tell you what, the Vikings respond pretty quickly. That's Pachi Franks keeping it moving on the ground. He moves the chains for a big-time Middleton gain. They get into the red zone. Later on, Rigby would get a stop. They have it in the second quarter. Luke Flowers looking deep. That's Brecken Surly all alone as he walks into the end zone. They were on fire at this point, but the Vikings looking to respond through the air. Unfortunately, it's Carter Freeman picking it off 
and that is a house call. So the defending state champs back like they never left. They take down Middleton 42 to 16, and they're going to travel to take on number one Eagle next week. All right, let's stick at the 5A classification. Following a four-game winning streak to start the season, Bora look to put an end to their five-game skid at Rocky Mountain tonight. Tied at seven in the second quarter. Jared Akibe takes it around the right edge and gets the first down. A few plays later, Tayshawn Reese would tote the rock down inside the two-yard line. A physical run here. From there, well, Rocky goes with a little QB keeper. Camden Crum sneaks it across the goal line. That made it 14-7 in favor of the Grizz. Now, following the three and out by Bora, Rocky kind of gets back to work on offense. Colin Chapman floats a screen pass. Reese comes up with it, gets around, follows his blockers, delivers the blow, gets out over midfield. A few plays later, this drive would stall out, so the Grizz end up attempting a fake punt on fourth and two at midfield with about a minute to go. It's the Lions that roar and come up with a stop. So now Bora tries to get to work in their two-minute offense. Jacob Detweiler, the sidearm toss to Ryan Lopez over the middle. On the next play, Detweiler goes to his all-world running back, Javon Nelson, fighting for extra yards. He coughs it up. I believe that was Isaiah Reed that forced the fumble. Rylan Kelly recovers it. A big play that gave Rocky a 14-7 lead at half and they would build on that in the second half. Rocky Mountain wins tonight 30 to 15. They are marching on in the 5A state playoffs. So here we go. This is what your quarterfinal matchups will look like next week. Wow, I got to tell you, Rigby traveling over to Eagle, that feels like it might be kind of a preview of the 5A state championship game. Eagles undefeated. That's a tough draw for them. Rocky Mountain and Coeur d'Alene, they've already done this. Rocky Mountain went up to Coeur d'Alene and already beat the Vikings this year. We'll see if the Grizz can take their show on the road, do it yet again. Hawaii has to go over to Eastern Idaho and take on Highland. And finally, Mountain View and Meridian. We get that matchup too. You, you talk about almost another unfair uh, matchup for a team that's they got to buy is a higher seed. Mountain View beat Meridian in week two of the season, so um, that is a heck was, of a it was draw. A, a bloodbath of a game, wasn't I, it? I, I, honestly, it was so long ago, yeah, I don't exactly I remember the final score, Brady, but um, Meridian always plays games close, so I'm going to assume that, yes, a physical contest between those teams. But imagine, I mean, the way this plays out, I know that you're going to play tough opponents this time of year because only the, the strong survive this time of year, but for the top two seeds, pretty much in – at least in our in our area, to get Mountain View and Rigby right out of the gate, that is, that's a tough that draw. Tough. Also, with Rigby, it almost you feel a little bit of deja vu from last season. Don't they were bring the defending up. state yeah. champions. They didn't have an incredible regular season yep. run. I think some people started overlooking them, and then boom, playoffs. They rolled through everybody. Mm -hmm. With a couple of gonna tough be, wins on the road over here, going to be tough to to do it to Eagle, the the top team in the state, yeah. according to the polls. But. Yeah. Man, that is Man, some epic matchups next week. That is going to be a fun week. All right, let's get back to some highlights here as we dip down to the 4A classification. Yeah, Brady. let's head out to Skyview High School where the 8th seeded Hawks welcome the 9th seeded Shelly Russets into town. Unfortunately, no appearance from the Spud King himself tonight. Things all tied up at 14 to start the second half. This game was a defensive slugfest. Early third quarter, Russets take a deep shot, but it's a blue jersey coming down with it. That's Aiden Martinez pulling down the INT. Get some extra yards going the other way, but that Shelly defense would step right up. Fourth down, the Hawks decide to go for it. They're going to let their quarterback, Cash Buse, keep it himself, but the Russets refuse to give up any ground. They keep him from moving the chains, and they take over. That's how it went. Scoreless back and forth through a cold third quarter until suddenly in the fourth, Shelly would drive the ball all the way downfield, set up first and goal at the Skyview one, but that Skyview defense continuing to fight. That's Mason Cron breaking through the line, getting a huge stop on second down. After that, on third, the Russets got called for holding. They'd settle for a field goal, just a little off the mark. An incredible stand by that Skyview defense, and with four minutes left to go, they're going to have a shot to retake the lead. Shelly holds them to fourth down, but they're not going to give them the ball back. Quarterback Cash Buse hits Dane Bowman in the flat the junior gets just enough for the first down and from there the Hawks would ride their momentum 
Busitz Kron once again, who comes down with it in traffic, rolls out of the tackle and gets into the end zone for six points. Skyview would take a 21 to 14 lead, but you'll notice they don't celebrate too much just yet. There's still about three minutes left in the game if the Russets are going to be able to stage a comeback. It all comes down to a fourth and four on the Skyview side of the field. They're going to go ahead and pitch it to the outside, but guess what? Here's a familiar sight. It's that guy again. Mason Cron torpedoes himself into the ball carrier, knocks him out of bounds just short of the line again. That guy doing everything tonight. Now it's time to celebrate. Skyview takes down Shelly in a thriller 21 to 14. It doesn't, doesn't look like Mason misses arm days. I don't think so. I don't know if he misses any day. I don't think he misses cardio day. Yeah, certainly doesn't miss tackles either. They're yeah. well done by Skyview getting a big victory tonight. Okay, we continue this now. Minico welcoming Emmett for some first round action of the state playoffs. We're going to start off with Minico trailing by six. Carson Waymit here looks uh, to help himself out and keeps it himself. He goes in from 10 yards out for the touchdown. Minico makes it a 7 6 ball game as they go in front. But Emmett. Man, can they punch right back. Quentin Smith takes the handoff, and he is gone. 70 yards to the house. Emmett finds the end zone. This one would just keep going back and forth. Two incredible offenses. Here comes Wayman again, does it again. Same distance, a 10-yard TD run, and now Minico goes back in front 20 to 19. Back comes Emmett, though. Check out Isaac Brennan bouncing off tacklers, making guys miss. The touchdown will put the Pups back in front, 27 to 20. Minico came to fight. I'm telling you, what a ball game here. You can see Riker Stimson with the amazing catch as White Wayman puts it up for him. We're tied up at 27. This game would go to overtime as well. Emmett is moving on, folks. They win the night out on the road, 34-33, the final. Here are your 4A quarterfinals matchups. Skyview going to have to go on the road next week to take on Hillcrest. Skyline traveling over to uh, Twin Falls. Emmett and Bishop Kelly going to battle once again. And then Pocatello traveling up to Sandpoint. So our two... Uh, Local teams from the Treasure Valley going to have to face off in the quarterfinals. Bishop Kelly, a blowout victory yet again this evening. The Knights just continue to storm through the season. Burley, a pretty good squad. Got the best player that uh, the state of Idaho has seen in terms of high school recruiting in quite some time, but uh, they were no match for the Bishop Kelly Knights this evening. But I'll tell you what, Bishop Kelly 9-0 and in the season. Their closest game was against Emmett earlier in the year. There you go. The Huskies took That's it to them for a little while. Yeah, we talked about it at the 5A level. That's a tough matchup at the 4A level. What a, what a BK do to deserve that? Yeah, you'd think a first round bye gets you a little bit more. Apparently not. Apparently not. Okay. Let's continue to make our way and uh, head on over to some 3A action here, Brady. Yeah, Weezer hosting Marsh Valley. The Wolverines would strike first. Running back Jaden Walker with the sweep to the left. Some great blocks would pave the way for a 15-yard rushing touchdown. The Eagles had a few chances in the first quarter moving down this field, but the play action in the red zone gets picked off by Weezer's Jack Schertz, taking the ball back deep into enemy territory. But Marsh Valley would get another chance in the second quarter. As, a, he get, as Bear gets the pitch, runs past a swarm of wet red jerseys, setting up a first down, which would help give the Eagles position for this 39-yard field goal. That's booted in by Seth Bar Bartschi. Eagles on the board with three. Next drive, quarterback Cooper Bowman rolls out, delivers one right to Caden Hansen, who shakes the defender before getting brought down. And the Wolverines would extend their lead before half ended. Colin Cook drops back and heaves a pass to the other side of the field. That's Telson Hawker in stride, taking it to the house. The Wolverines would hold on to their lead, and they're looking ahead after a 38-16 win. Okay, so uh, we continue through some highlights here, and how about we go uh, to last night, Fruitland. In all honesty, you can see by their record, not the greatest season, certainly not by their standards, only two and seven, but hey, somehow they sneak into the state playoffs. A gorgeous snow-covered Teton Mountains were the backdrops for this ball game. Teton would have their way early on. The Timberwolves moving quickly. That's Jack Joyce turning on the wheels there. He gets the house call less than 90 seconds into the game to put Teton up. Seven nothing. The defense was excellent as well. The Timberwolves halt the Warriors on fourth and goal from the forward yard line. That was the second of two 
four down stops early in this contest. On the ensuing drive, it's the birthday boy. Jack Nelson throwing a dart to Tyson Brown down near the goal line. It's another tee down score to make it 13 to nothing. Then, how about Thomas Hughesville making his mark on this game? A thing of beauty. It looks like he gets bottled up. Somehow he escapes. He goes 84 yards on this play to score another touchdown. I think you can tell the, the theme of this one. He wasn't done. He puts more points on the board right here. Uh, this less cool, but still really cool. Teton beats Fruitland, eliminating the Grizzlies from the playoffs. 47-15 the final. All right, and finally, let's jump into some two-way action. Yes. The top-seeded Melba Mustangs hosting the Marsing Huskies, who are making their first trip to the state playoffs in about 10 years. Heck of a job by Shea McClellan, the former Boise State standout. Yeah, it's been a big turnaround for the program. Can they keep it going tonight? Well, Melba would get off to a fast start. They were moving the chains. Cutter Buse hits Noah West. That connection was on display early and often as Melba marched their way into the end zone. But that Marsing defense would hold them to fourth down. They decide, you know what, they're going to go for it. They put the ball in the hands of their senior running back. Chade Franklin is going to be the one to drive it in, and he pushes his way in for six. So the home team Mustangs would cruise to an early 14-0 lead. But the Huskies were clawing right back. They would get a great look right here. Jace Chadez hits Noah Shelton. Somehow, the man is able to stay on his feet all the way into the end zone for what should have been a touchdown. Unfortunately for the Huskies, a penalty flag would bring that one back and then knock them out of field goal range. Heartbreaker. Final two minutes, they're still looking to get on the board. They stick with that same connection. Chadez hits Shelton way deep this time. The freshman comes down with it, gets his team set up on the Melba side of the field. But before they could break into the end zone, that Melba defense would step up. Brandon, Brendan Svedich with the interception right here. That would keep him off the board in the first half. Marsing would get on the board in the second, but eventually, Melville holds strong. The number one team stays number one tonight. Melville wins this one 34 to 14. Melville moving on. Congrats to Shane McClellan. One heck of a job that he is doing out there at his alma mater. Okay, we get you some more four race scores. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. We'll show it to you now. Bishop Kelly moving on to the state playoffs. They humble Burley tonight. 48 to 12. Chris Kulig is having a phenomenal debut season over there in the black and gold. Twin Falls beat Lakeland going out on the road. 28-12 the final. Kimberly, uh, easy work against Gooding. 31-8 the final in Buell. Knocking off McCall Donnelly on their home field. 20-12 the final there. A few more scores for you. Valley beating Potlatch. 30 to 16. Kamii knocking off Idaho City 56 to 22. Grace takes care of Carey uh, 28 6 the final. And Dietrich uh, just about doubling up council yesterday 50 to 28 the final of that contest. You look at some of these uh, smaller schools, if you will, eventually one of them is going to have to play. Uh, the, the team that you think could probably beat anybody in the state, that maybe even be at the, col at the uh, college level, the, uh, the, the, the mighty Kendrick Tigers. I think the Kendrick Tigers could probably beat the Dallas Cowboys, but... They did score 112 points last week, And I Dallas think. hasn't done that All ever. year, probably. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, no jokes. Kendrick is, is very, very good. Um, yeah, what, what a fun season here on Friday Night Football. I, I said at the top of the show, a bittersweet feeling. We love doing this. Friday nights are crazy. We have early morning wake-up calls because uh, Bronco Roundup game day starts at 9 o'clock in, in, you know, in the morning. Uh, but it is so much fun. You feel the energy. I do want to say, though, we will continue to cover the state playoffs. We're just going to cover those highlights during the news at 10, not on our extended edition of Friday Night Football. Once our teams start to get eliminated, it gets a little more difficult to fill a full half hour of, of high school football. So we'll still serve whatever needs you have during our regular news at 10 on Friday evenings from here on out. Yeah, and it's going to be fun moving forward. we got some great matchups next week. Mm -hmm. and. Man, it, it's sad when it all comes to an it end, is. but it is going to be exciting to see who finishes up at number one in each mm -hmm. classification. Yeah, it, at the 4A level, gosh, I don't know who's going to slow down Bishop Kelly. Emmett's going to give him one heck of a fight. They did earlier in the year, but Bishop Kelly, no doubt the team to beat at the 5A classification. I, I got to say, get your popcorn ready for the quarterfinals. Every one of those matchups is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Uh, none probably better, though, again, than, than Eagle welcoming Rigby that that's a tough draw for the Mustangs I assume 
they're going to be up to the challenge, and at least they had this bye week. Rigby obviously had to play tonight. Maybe they get out the jitters or whatever you want to say of the postseason, but, but Eagles should be rested up ready to go for that game next week. Well, one of the themes that we were talking about throughout the entire regular season was how much parity we've been seeing, yeah. you know, not only around this state, but especially in the Southern Idaho Conference. Mm -hmm. So despite some of these, these tough matchups for our local teams and some exciting matchups as we look around, I expect to see some upsets as we move forward. Uh, Mountain View, they could beat anybody or lose to anybody, in all honesty, this, year, this season. Sometimes you go to their games, they look like world beaters. Other times, uh, too many penalty flags on the field and some of their youth and injuries kind of catch up with them. But that's a, that's a squad that could be capable of, of literally anything. Meridian, I still really like the Warriors. I know that they have lost two hard-fought games to Eagle. Both of those were at Thunder Stadium. Uh, I just like their ability. It gets a little colder. Uh, the wind starts to pick up this time of year, and they got three, four really capable guys of, uh, of running the rock uh, over there, including their quarterback, Zeke Martinez, who is, uh, man, steady Eddie th this time of year. There there's not much that... A lot of playoff experience for that guy. Exactly, and, and there's just not much that uh, can, can really rattle him. And so I like their running backs, Riley Byington, uh, the Del Rio kid, and even, even the Jones kid. I mean, that, those are some, some of the best playmakers in the state. So um, I really like them. And then after what we saw why he do tonight, especially on defense. I'm, I'm not counting out Jason Burden's boys by any means. Well, you know, Hawaii's been ready because they're watching all their classmates win state titles in just the th first three years of that program. But, I mean, so they got they got the, guys. The girls' soccer girls team soccer got it done last weekend. Softball and baseball. I mean, they yeah. got guys who are on the football team that were also on that baseball squad. Who Gage are, Haas. Yeah, Gage Haas. A like, anchored the lineup, was a pitcher for the baseball team. He, uh, he's, you know, they've won back-to-back -back on the diamond, and, and now he's trying to help guide them to a uh, – state championship for the football f football team that's, that's yeah, impressive yeah. work right there you know sure enough it's it's really fun to win state i asked him about it that's what he told me and uh, he wants to make sure his his <laughs> teammates on the football team get to experience that that makes sense to me yeah so mm -hmm. you know i wouldn't i wouldn't count them out i think there's a there's a huge hunger for those guys yeah. to you know not not be left out from the the excellence that's going on at the storm yeah uh, if you missed any of these highlights, if you need final scores, our crew is crushing it for you. Zach Armstrong has all your highlights and score updates available for you right now at KTVB.com. Uh, everything you need to know about what is going on in the uh, Idaho State football playoffs, you can find right there. We'll have our matchups for next week populated soon if they already aren't up there. But it has been a very, very fun season. We got so many people that make this show possible. We are grateful to each and every one of them because we are not the only ones up late on Friday nights. It's everybody that you can't see working behind the cameras to make this show possible as well. It's been a fun season, Brady. It's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to, like you said, Continuing, not in our, our full long form show, but getting the rest of these done. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll take care of you from here on out, everybody. We appreciate you joining us tonight and for the season. It has been a great year of Friday Night Football here on KTVB. Uh, good luck to everybody out there in the state playoffs if you're still alive, and congrats to those that uh, at least made it this far. It's been a fun year. For Brady Frederick, I'm Jay Tust. This is Friday Night Football.